Stacy Slade, and I want to talk a little bit about health clearances. Uh, in Bernie's Mountain Dogs, we talk a lot about, you hear a lot about, do they have their health clearances? Are they health checked? Um, when you're looking for a new puppy. And it's probably the one most important thing that you can do when you're looking for a puppy is to set yourself up for success, stack the deck in favor of a healthy puppy. You have the power of doing that, and I'm gonna go over what that actually means. So I have all this paperwork in front of me because that's what it is. It's be learning how to look at paperwork of health clearances. So with Bernese Mountain Dog, as within any breed, there is a national club. So we have the Bernese Mountain Dog Club of America, BMDCA. We have a website, bmdca.org. And on that website, you can see what the national club recommends breeding dogs have in the way of health clearances to produce healthy dogs. The reason why those health tests are selected is because it is seen as those are in the breed the biggest potential diseases that breeders produce uh, with it with the genetics of the Bernese Mountain Dog. So if I were breeding a poodle for say per se there's a whole nother list of different diseases that poodles get. So it's really important that you research the breed you're getting to make sure that the sire and dam of any potential puppy is health tested. So you are stacking the deck in the favor of your puppy to not get those diseases. It's not 100% uh, equal. We You can still produce um, unhealthy puppies and we work very hard not to, but we're, we're actually doing things to try to prevent breeding the diseases that are common in Bernese Mountain Dogs. So. We can't alleviate them all together, but we can do our darndest to try and make sure that you get a healthy puppy that has a fantastic life, hopefully lives a long life, and can enjoy that life. So these are the important things that you wanna ask any breeder, any and all breeders you talk to. A, a reputable breeder will not be offended if you ask for these health clearances. They hope that you know what these health clearances are because we spend a lot of time and energy and money getting these health clearances so we do produ produce healthy dogs. Um, also that you ask us about them and if they're, if a dog is bred with a clearance you don't understand, ask the breeder why. They should be able to discuss why they make a decision, when they make a decision um, to breed a certain dog. So there's, there is a lot of, there is some area that people make decisions around and it's good to have those conversations because hopefully they're based on years of knowledge of a certain pedigree that that breeder has been working with. If they're just putting two dogs together and hoping for the best, that's a breeder I would stay away from. If somebody says they didn't do health clearances or the grandparents are health tested or I just did the hips, I didn't think I need to do elbows, those are people that aren't doing the best by you as the puppy buyer. You are spending a lot of money on this puppy. That money should be going in for a well-bred dog, a dog bred for health and temperament and hopefully longevity. This breed is a has a lifespan of seven to nine years old average. So um, we, we hope to hit the top end of that and keep on going. That's our goal. And we continually try and do that with all the different ways that we um, raise our dogs and breed them. So first, um, there are two health clearances that have been in the breed since pretty much the beginning of the breed being in America, and that is hip dysplasia and elbow dysplasia clearances. So Orthopedic Foundation of America, OFA, is who we uh, go through to get these clearances. There is also pen hip for hips. They do not do elbows. So you always have to look for OFA elbows. You can look for pen hip or OFA hips, but usually they're OFA hips. So elbow dysplasia is crippling, hip dysplasia is crippling. There are different uh, uh, stages of it that are less so, but it is uh, incredibly important that you find a breeder who is testing their dogs. The grades of hip and elbows are, start with excellent, good, excuse me, this is just hips. Excellent, good, fair. Those are all passing grades. Those are all passing hips um, that are recommended 
that's okay to breed. Then there's borderline or subluxated hips and they, requ they request that those be resent in. Um, and then you have uh, mild, moderate, and severely dysplastic dogs. Those dogs are not recommended to be bred and that a breeder has a lot of knowledge behind that pedigree and understanding who they're breeding to. Um, if they're gonna breed even a mild or moderate hip, I would never suggest breeding a severe hip and only someone who's been breeding a very long time. But even so, as a puppy buyer, it's probably not a puppy I would be comfortable buying out of a dog with a bad hip clearance. Um, the elbow clearance, elbow dysplasia is very hard on the dog. There's a lot of weight that the dog carries on their front. Um, and I wouldn't ever buy a dog without this clearance. Um, elbow clearance is normal. And I've got one here, this is what I'm showing here, sorry. I've got a clearance for elbow and it states that they're normal. So that's what you're looking for in this certificate. For hips, oops, that's another elbow. And for hips, the blue one, it says excellent on this clearance. You're looking for the excellent, good, or fair clearance right there. Hips, or excuse me, elbows, you're just gonna see a normal or you're gonna see a grade. Grade one, two, or three. So it, in, it will say if it's dysplasia or FCP or UA, um, different, different diseases within the elbow joint. But regardless, you generally are looking for a normal. Um, it is seen as some people do breed grade one elbows. Um, I would have a conversation with the breeder and just talk about, you know, if it's a, a unilateral, if it's just one elbow that's grade one, why they feel it's okay to breed, what the hip clearances are on the mother, on the father, the grandparents, start to research the pedigree. So I'm gonna also mention something I've mentioned before in my videos on finding a puppy, is to go to burnerguard.org. These clearances, if I'm a reputable breeder, will be in Burnerguard under the dogs that you are getting a puppy from. End of story. If they don't have these clearances in Burner Guard and can't give you these, then the breeder is not breeding for health, okay? They may not have it in Burner Guard, but if they can give you these certifications, then that's something. Um, but if they can't do that and, and you can't find the, the clearances in Burner Guard, then I would probably look elsewhere, as that breeder is not doing everything they can do to give you a product, which is what a puppy is, that is the best that they can for the amount that you're spending. You're spending a lot of money, and, and honestly, with all the clearances we're gonna go through today, it's about six to $800, let's call it a thousand on the top end to get the health clearances on a Bernese Mountain Dog. That's usually half the price of a puppy. Okay, let that sink in. A litter of 10 puppies, to get that sire and dam's clearances might be $2,000 at the very, very, very top end, they should be getting those health clearances to sell those puppies. It's kind of like getting a car checked out, getting the car fax, getting the oil changed to sell that car. Bare minimum, it's what I expect of a reputable breeder. All right. So um, I will say this is if you see a dog is AKC registered, that's fantastic. That means the dog is purebred and it's registered with AKC, that is all it means. AKC is not a seal of quality or of healthy or anything like that. They, um, dogs coming from pet stores can be AKC registered. So just know AKC means they're purebred. All my dogs are AKC registered, but that does not mean that they have their health clearances. So I just wanted to note that. Um, so the most common issues in this breed are hip and elbow issues. Hi, Deuce. Deuce wants to come say hi. He was out playing with Hazy. Hey, buddy. Um, oh, you can't take over me, buddy. I know you'd like to sit on my lap. Um, all right, so the pen hip is a little different where it measures the distraction index of the hip socket from the ball. And that's also a good reading. It's usually only beneficial if you're breeding a dog with a pen hip clearance to another dog that has a pen hip clearance because they're the same clearances you can associate with. Um, but it's something and it's good and uh, it's a pretty good registry um, to, to note. Um, but you still need OFA elbows. So the other thing about getting health clearances is anybody can and should get health clearances and put them in burner guard as 
all burner guard is open to all bernese mountain dogs anybody can put a profile in their picture in there and put their health clearances in there any challenges uh, that they have health wise with the dog that helps breeders out to be able to see which lines produce what so they know how to mix lines and uh, the the other part with burner guard is that um, you should be able to see all this information. It's free for anyone. Anybody can use it. Anybody can put the information in it, albeit it's a little bit old. It's a little clunky. They're working on updating it, but it's there for us. Our breed has this database. It's amazing compared to what other breeds don't have, so we can use it. It's there for you to use to research what a healthy Bernese Mountain Dog is. Um, so a one last thing about hip and elbow clearances. Um, we can get prelims or preliminary hip and elbow clearances done at 12 months old. And this is what a prelim certification looks like. It is not the finals. You want to still get finals at two years old. So that's why it's a certificate at two years old versus just a sheet saying this is what we see. So you want to look for the certificates at two years old to see what the dog as is as a breeding adult. Okay, that's hips and elbows. Um, vets, so generally, hip, generally vets, your general vet doesn't do these x-rays. You would need to go to a vet who knows the views that OFA is looking for. Um, and that's why you wanna go through a reputable breeder. We all know the vets in our area. There's about two or three vets in Washington State where I'm at that do these x-rays and do them well and do a lot of them. So I know they get the positioning correct on my dog. So when I submit that, it'll be um, a good x-ray that is a good representation of my dog's joints. So um, uh, reputable breeders can tell you where to go. The regional club in your area will know which vets are the best to go to uh, for these x-rays to submit to OFA. Your regular vet cannot tell you just by your dog walking if the dog has dysplasia or not. They do need to be certified by OFA. Now, to diagnose a dog that has clinical um, uh, Symptoms, that's a different story. This is about health certifications. Um, so we'll move on to the heart. The heart needs to be certified by a board certified cardiologist, okay? It's not your general vet. There are vets that go to extra schooling for to be able to uh, listen to the different chambers of the heart and know where to find those different chambers of the heart. Their stethoscope is like probably a $600 to $1,000 stethoscope versus a $40 to $60 stethoscope of a general vet. I'm elaborating, but you get my gist. There are specialists, they know what they're looking for. Bernie's Mountain Dogs can have subaortic stenosis or SAS. Um, they at DCM, which is di disseminated cardiomyopathy. Um, it's a little rare, but it's been linked to the grain-free foods that you see. Um, so there, and then there's other heart issues that come with murmurs that a, a board-certified cardiologist will hear. So it's a pretty quick, uh, it's an auscultation, it's, which means they just listen to the heart. It can take five minutes. It's pretty short. Um, if there's a board certified cardiologist in your area, you can uh, schedule this appointment or a lot of times at dog shows, we'll have clinics and anybody's welcome to bring their dog to that clinic. Um, so you are welcome to uh, get, and usually they're $35 to get your, health, your heart certification at a dog show because they're doing it at discounted prices. Same with eyes. Um, the eyes are, the important thing with getting a board certified ophthalmologist and I'm just making sure Hazy's not eating my flowers because I took down the fence hoping I can trust her. <laughs> um, so the eyes are important. Dogs can go blind. We don't want that. We don't want cataracts. We don't want you to have to deal with any sight issues. So we get the eyes um, looked at by a board certified ophthalmologist. Again, your regular vet can't certify your dog for this. So it's a form that has lists all the different places a cataract can be, all the different shapes it can be, where it can be, entropian, ectropian, um, where the eyelids are okay. So they can um, help give the certification the dog has clear eyes and should be bred. We don't want to breed all of those uh, issues because we don't want to pro um, propagate them. Easy. I'm gonna leave my flowers alone. She's smelling the roses. So you wanna look for normal. If uh, there's a few things like PPM, um, 
persistent pupillary membrane that's uh, not a big deal. But again, if you see something, ask your reader. It's not offensive. It's what we do. We want to talk about our health clearances. We wouldn't get them if we didn't want to share them with you. Um, so that's the eyes. Um, so the next one is degenerative myelopathy. And DM, degenerative myelopathy, is an issue with the myelin sheath in the vertebrae um, along the spinal cord. So it's something that cannot be diagnosed until the dog unfortunately has passed away and the spine is uh, basically under a necropsy is uh, dissected to find the degenerative myelopathy. So a dog can't be diagnosed with it. So it's a really fine definition that the DM tests are genetic tests. They are not diagnostic tests. So when you go to Gensol, or I believe um, OFA also does a DM test, we have two DM tests in Bernese Mountain Dogs. We have the SOD1A gene or mutation and the SOD1B mutation. So those two mutations have been found in Bernese and that's what we test for. So it's a little bit complicated. There's a Punnett square involved and there's some genetics involved, but there are three um, results from this test. There's clear, there's carrier, and there's at risk. Okay, all three of those dogs can be bred and should be bred. We need them in our gene pool. It's who you breed them to and what's in the pedigree behind them that the breeder takes under consideration. Okay, so it's really important to note that if you see an at risk in a pedigree, it's okay that that, that dog is in that pedigree because if they're bred to a clear, they can't produce more at risk. But if there's no DM in that pedigree, if no dogs have ever expressed DM, it's not something I worry about. It's, a, it's like about 2% of our breed ever die from symptoms of DM. So it's something we test for, it's something we want to be cognizant of. If it's in the pedigree, we want to be aware of it and breed away from it. Um, so research the pedigree in Bernergaard and these guys are so goofy playing. Um, oh, here comes Chase too. So research the pedigree, ask a breeder, have conversations about it. Don't be embarrassed to talk to a breeder about these things. This is something we know a lot about. Um, but again, it's not a diagnosis. So just be aware of that. Just because it, it says at risk or carrier or clear does not tell you what the dog has. Now a dog that is a clear or a carrier for DM cannot get DM. So in that regard, you know that, but at risk does not mean the dog will get DM. They won't express it. We don't know enough about the expression of this mutation in our breed yet. Von Willebrands. Von Willebrands is a bleeding disorder. It's type 2. Um, there are, there's type 1 and then there are also other ble bleeding um, disorders in dogs. So it's not the end all of what a dog can die from if they do bleed out. So, um, But it is something that was found in Bernese Mountain Dogs and uh, found that we do want to test for. Um, the, and, and something to note if your dog is going to go through surgery, it would be good to know that the dog isn't um, a carrier or uh, at, at risk for Von Willebrands. Um, so the final one is the newest test that we have, and again, it's a genetic test, which the DM, the Von Willebrands, and this one, the histiocytic sarcoma, are all genetic tests. They're not diagnostic. They don't say, oh, my dog has it or doesn't have it. They can tell you if they're if they have the mutation and that you can lead down that road of uh, kind of a, a process of elimination but it doesn't tell you the dog has it the antigene histiocytic sarcoma test is a breeding matchup test it's a test mating tool for breeders to use so both deuce and chase are tested for it hazy will be when she's a little older um, and it's a blood draw that we send to France. I so it sounds complicated. It's actually really not. It's pretty simple. And we get a, a, the result back, A, B, or C, but we don't use that in making the breeding decisions until we have test them up together. So you take a male, you take a female, and you put their genetic matchup together. If they're a B and a B, they'll tell you how many percentage of the A, B, and C that they would produce together. And another B and B, two different other dogs that are a B and B, or a B and A, might have completely different percentages that they would produce. It's not the same because it's nine genes as 22,000 uh, possibilities that they could match up wise. It's, it's new research. Uh, it's not an end-all be-all test right now, but it's something. And because cancer is the number one killer in Bernese Mountain Dogs, it's important. And it's important that we 
support this research and we help build it up to where we can get it to where it is more of a predictable of you know what we're producing in our breed so uh, it's important that we use it and that you talk to your breeder about it why they're doing it or not doing it um, it's new and so it's you know it's a hundred dollar test but for me it was worth doing it because I have some dogs in my pedigree that have died of histiocytic sarcoma which is the most common cancer in Bernese Mountain Dogs and I wanted to breed Chase to a dog that came from a line that didn't have much histio in it so I did and I found that so I had really good percentages with the matchup that I did so that made me um, that that helped me understand more of my breeding choice um, just remember that you want to work with a breeder that's conscientious of these health issues because this is the puppy you're bringing home. We want you to have a healthy puppy, well at least I'll say, I want you to have a healthy puppy. I want you to have a puppy that can enjoy its life and isn't in pain when it moves, that isn't blind or potentially drop dead from a heart disease because that's what the heart does is it funnels the body with life and so and pumps that blood through it so it needs to be strong and healthy. I want you to have that in your dogs and I want you to learn how to research that into BurnerGuard.org, being able to see those health clearances on every single dog that you want to purchase. Um, if you want an example, go to my BurnerGuard.org profile under Stacy Slade, it's in there, anybody can see it. Go find one of my dogs. Hazy, only, only, Hazy doesn't have any clearances yet because she's just a puppy, so she will start getting them soon. That's another good point, is you can get your DM, you can get Von Willebrands, and you can do the histiocytic sarcoma test um, at any point in time. The eyes, you can do at any point in time. Heart, you need to be, the dog needs to be a year old. And then hips and elbows, you can do at a year old for the prelims, but you have to get them at two years old for the finals. Um, Sorry, perched mouth. Um, so make sure that you understand this. Make sure that you are doing your due diligence. And I know you want a burner puppy, and I know it's easy to just say, well, this breeder can't do this, or they weren't able to get them done, or they're, they don't want to use burner guard. Guys, those are excuses. Those are not a reputable breeder that's trying to stack the deck in the health of the puppies. This isn't a money-making operation for a lot of people. So you can make money at it, but what's more important is that my puppy owners get amazing dogs that live a long time and that are super healthy. So Deuce wants to make sure you get healthy puppies too. So talk to your breeder, learn about BurnerGuard.org and how to navigate it, but look up my dogs. You can look up Deuce, you can look up Chase, you can look up their parents. Um, Deuce's parents are from Europe so they have a little bit fewer health certifications. There's different health um, requirements in different countries so it's good to know that but they still have their health clearances. So the hips and elbows were super important um, to get. So and, and temperaments too. You can check you know if dogs have been involved in sports that tells you that they have a good temperament that they can be out and about with dogs and people. So it's important to look up those things. Um, ask any questions about health clearances. I'm sure. It, oh, there's Hazy. <laughs> We're all joining in. They love being on camera. Um, if you guys have any questions or need any help with deciphering health clearances, please do let me know. I'm happy to help um, once I get outside this pile of burners. And uh, I hope you can find healthy puppies. It does take patience. It takes a little while to work with. There's not as many reputable breeders as there are scams and non-reputable breeders and puppy mills. Those guys, those puppies are easy to find because they're easy to produce. Anybody can put two dogs together. It takes a reputable breeder that cares about the welfare of the dog to do this right. Um, you'll see a subscribe button and also uh, tagline goods, which you see the shirt here is also we're powered by Tagline Goods. Check out the store. And uh, I hope that we answered some questions. And uh, good luck researching the health of your dog.